why do men struggle with monogamous relationships? What is it that they're doing wrong? Or even if you want to bring it in, what is it that their partner is doing wrong? That's not allowing them to be monogamous. So we've been baked into a, a culture of conquest of women. Okay. So these are things that, you know, habit is powerful. And habit becomes who you are. And the reason we, so, so many of us struggle with monogamy, and, and women struggle too, but just I don't, not, not at the same rate, is because women have to deal with the shame. People ask us all the time, how do you do it, right? As if we are some sort of supernatural beings. How do you stay monogamous to your partner? How do you stay faithful? How do you do it? What do you do, right? And I entertain the conversation even though I understand that at the end of the day, it's a desire that you got to have yourself. It's nothing that I could just tell you. And you just be like, wow, that makes so much sense. I'm gonna start being faithful. Like, it just doesn't work like that. I'm Simeon Pando. Joy Monet. Jack. I'm Melvin Gregg. This is another episode of Nice and Me. I'm Duke. I'm Omar. I'm Jalan. I don't think being a doer is a masculine thing. I feel like that is because you could be a doer within within spaces that somebody might deem feminine and right. they wouldn't say you're masculine. Right. So when people talk about masculine, are they really just talking about um, the energy that a woman is bringing to a conversation or an environment? I think so. I don't really think it's the act. I think it's the energy. It's the energy. For, for instance, I don't, think, um, I don't think being successful is masculine. No. You know? I don't think being career driven is necessarily masculine. I think how you go about you know, achieving that type of success, all right? So if you feel like you have to be, if you, if you feel like you have to be just dismissive of everything, maybe you're masculine, mm -hmm. you know? If, if nothing else matters to you and you're like, yo, my career is the most important thing in the world, okay, maybe you're masculine because because men have that feeling because they feel like, yo, I would be inadequate if I'm not successful. Mm -hmm. I think that mindset is a masculine mindset. And a woman could be more than adequate without, without being, without being as driven and successful. Yeah. Right? So I think that when we look at it from those perspectives, yes. But taking care of yourself is not masculine. Mm -mm. That's not masculine. You're just taking care of yourself. So taking care of yourself just means like... Paying for your own bills. That's not masculine. That's not masculine. That's not masculine. So so what happens is So when women say they're operating in their masculine, yo, because, because they're paying their own yeah. bills. <laughs> because they're paying their own bills. Yeah. Yo. They, are they essentially gaslighting themselves? Oof. I couldn't even use the definition. I like I wouldn't even be able to I don't know how to use gaslighting effectively. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Hey, I second that. I yeah. second that. I don't know how to use it effectively and I wouldn't even want to disrespect any people who went to school for 10, 12 years to be like, man, these people using these words wrong, people using narcissists wrong. Like I hear narcissists almost every single day and I've heard from therapists that it was like, it's a very, very small percentage of people who are truly narcissists. Yep. So when we just are given our diagnosis of what somebody did that we didn't like, I think it's, I, I, I stay away from it. So I wouldn't say they gaslight in their selves, but I, I, I think, You'll be doing a disservice to yourself if you are you are saying, I'm only operating on my masculine because I'm paying my bills. I'm, you know, paying my bills. Taking care of yourself. Yeah. You know, it's now, now if a woman was now if, if a woman was in a relationship and she's taking care of the bills for the entire household, now she's operating her masculine. Cause you're making decisions for more than just yourself. Yeah. Right. If a man had a self care day, I wouldn't say, "Man, my man operating is feminine today." Like I wouldn't say that. Ah, uh, yeah, you just taking care of yourself. You yep. just taking care of yourself. You just taking care of yourself. And whether skin is involved, your nails are involved, I wouldn't say that he's operating in his feminine. Yeah, we gotta be careful that. about that because I think masculine and feminine is us embodying the characteristics. You know, not just doing the actions. So me taking care of myself is the action. You know, me uh, feeling the the need to decompose and my immediate way to do it is to go get my 
was getting pedicure because I'm stressed. Like decompress, Decom decompose. Oh, I said decompose. I'm like, I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I said decompose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you, you was decompose gonna rot. dead. I'm sitting there rot. <laughs> <laughs> that was dead. You was decompressed. You was dead, dead, uh -huh. dead, dead. That's why we're team. Dead. Okay, that's cool, why we're team. So we're not gonna let you get out here and go and, viral um, saying decompose. I don't think it's feminine for a man to take care of himself, right? Whether it's skincare or, as Duke was saying, if you're getting your pedicure, and it's not the act as you were saying. It's right, the embodiment, right. and this is who I am, and right. this is the way that I show up in the world. Taking care of yourself whether it's you as a woman paying your bills, doesn't showcase masculinity. Mm -hmm. You know, taking care of yourself as a man, getting a manicure, pedicure, facial, doesn't showcase femininity. Mm -hmm. So I feel like in that space, when we're talking about, like you saying, masculine and feminine, and we're kind of bouncing off both of those things, it's not what you do, it's more of a who you are kind of thing. And I don't think who you are should ever even be based on your environment or other people. So me personally, I can't see an environment that I will be in that it would say, okay, cool, I'm going to be feminine in this environment. This is the environment to be feminine in. And I had to operate in my feminine because I was in this environment. Now, I will say this. There are traits that are generally more masculine and there are traits that are generally more feminine. Yeah. Those are tra there are certain things like if oh man you're nurturing. Oh you real nurturing to your daughter. Mm -hmm. It's that's a that will fall under the side of traits of feminine, but I wouldn't say you're operating in your feminine. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Now, nah, you're a masculine man. Yep. For sure. And I feel like sometimes if we look at oh yeah, paying bills is masculine. That doesn't mean that you're a masculine woman. You can do a trait. You can, you can, I mean, you can participate in an act. It's not a full trait of who you are. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's where the 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 discrepancy kind of comes into play. Sometimes you do you do an act and you fit, you own it as a trait. And I don't think necessarily that that is the case. Yeah, you know why I think it's so it's such a thing for people to say or women to say, yo, I'm operating on my masculine. Is I actually think that I think that people women think being a man is cool. It's cool to be a man. All right. I think um, saying I am masculine or do things that are traditionally associated with men, it gives you brownie points. There aren't too many things that I would be willing to say. Hey, I do this just as good as a woman. That's going to give me brownie points, right? Or going to make me look like powerful. All right. Mm -hmm. I think being a man is something that moving like a man. That's why women are so quick to say, "Y'all moving like a man." Right. My I'm, my emotions are like a man because it's almost it's almost cooler to. You think women think we find we think that's powerful? I think I think women. Yes, I, that's what I do think. I that's do crazy. Think, I think women think that we feel like, "Hey, yo, we powerful and we got all the cards and we got all everything easy." No, I'm saying if a woman is moving like that. Oh, do we do? No, I think that I think that women don't care because they feel like they can move like that, and it's, it's just it's just it's just more powerful, right? It's like the example that I would say is just like think of something that okay, I'll do this. When a woman is successful in a male dominated field, you're gonna hear about it, mm -hmm, okay? Mm -hmm. And she's gonna get credit for that correct right correct yo i'm successful in the male dominant sphere all my peers is males and i'm successful when do you get credit for being dominant in a female dominated field when do you get credit as a man for being successful when is it looked upon as oh that's oh he's doing a good job when you're successful in a female dominated industry i say makeup artists hair hair professionals you don't even get that do you I think as, as a as a as a man, what think, about single fathers? Do you? I think they're they're you know uh, what I mean. Like they're do. makeup male makeup artists that get more praise for being at a level of let's say women in the makeup field operate here, and he's kind of operating here. They can put him here because he's a man, and he's not supposed to be doing that. Okay, and here's the other caveat: is that are they straight men? Mm. You know what the answer is to that question, dude. Not straight men. Yeah. Okay. 
So when you're, when you're a straight man, you don't get no credit for being as good as women at anything. Yeah. All right. If you're if you're um, give me something that women dominate or, or women dominate industries. Makeup. Makeup. What's another one? What's their beauty? Beauty. Let's go uh, styling. Styling. Okay, styling. Forget it. You're not gonna get. No one's ever gonna say, "Man, you, man, this dude right here. Look at look what he's doing. He's a number one stylist, and he, he's competing with a lot of women. Nobody cares. Yeah, nobody cares. So what I'm trying to say is, like, it's just there's just more benefit in saying, "Yo, yo, I'm masculine. I'm operating my masculine," than saying, "Yo, I'm operating my feminine." I'm gonna ask you a question. So when you see us knowing the history of kings and queens mm-hmm. and really diving in and understanding the importance of a queen, when you see women and they have king before their name, whatever their name is. That's because that's what, that, that right there is pretty much what I'm saying. Yo, we want to live up. We, we want to be like the men because we feel like the position that they're in. No, nah, I'm, I'm serious. We feel like the position that they're in is the number one spot. We feel like they can make the decisions, they're the leaders, and we want to be that. So when you have a woman who is going to dismiss the queen title, as powerful as the queen is, mm-hmm. as powerful as the queen is, I don't even want it, I don't even want that. I want to be the king. King, whatever your name is, and you're a woman. This is exactly what I'm talking about. It's because queen's not good enough. Okay, so where does the credit go to for the women that are operating in their feminine? They adore being feminine. They love being feminine. And, you know, they move in society like that. Mm-hmm. And I know we, we do have examples of those type mm-hmm. of women. Mm-hmm. So what about the women that are moving like that? And they are, because I feel like we're still talking to a, a select, just a select group of women. Correct. What about the women that are moving like that? How, how do they get credit? How do they get credit they get for, the, for they, just doing what they're supposed to do? Like, how do, feminine? Yeah. They get the love. They get chose. Not to say, not to say everyone wanna get chose. What I'm trying to say is like, no, 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 not to say it's like everyone's out here to get chose, but I'm saying, yo, there is a trade-off. Okay. Okay, so maybe if I scale back on trying to be the masculine person, then I get to receive something else that I've, I've been yearning for. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But maybe I don't, maybe I want both, but I really want to be the masculine person. So then maybe I don't get the the love that I'm yearning for. That's the trade off. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And it just it's a natural order of things. As men, right? You can be beautiful. You can have all these things going for yourself. Uh, but naturally, we're gonna we're gonna kind of lean towards the queen. You, we both, you can't be a king and I can't be a king. That don't make sense. And I'm damn sure not being, I'm not going to be a queen. You feel like relationships like that butt heads a lot? They butt heads a I lot? I feel like they don't exist like that in real life. With the, the lost identities? Yeah. And, and the king, the double kings? No. Nah. The double kings? The double kings. That don't work. Okay. So I ask if they butt heads a lot because, you know, when you butt heads, there is a, there, there, it's crazy. Emotions. The emotions that you see or feel that main emotions that you feel eventually turn into actions that you can see. So whether those emotions of us button heads turns into someone participating in infidelity or those emotions that you butting heads just leads to you guys breaking up, eventually an action is gonna happen from that. Mm-hmm. I've been having a I've been I've been having a lot of conversations with men most recently and the topic came up and it was it was super interesting so this is what this episode is going to be about guys we're getting into the episode sometime we like to do a little a little talk and bring it into camera but this episode is going to be a good episode um i think it's going to be a much needed episode for men and women and uh this kind of this episode kind of is going to be where it starts at the epicenter of how we started guys um we started having shop talk Mm -hmm. And people started joining in our shop talk. And one of my buddies, he came in and he was just sitting there. He was waiting for a little bit because, you know, you guys know I'll be behind. He was waiting for a little bit. (laughs) And uh, he asked, he just asked like, hey, yo, do y'all girls got y'all passwords to y'all phone? And I thought it was interesting. And, 
you know, I let a couple of guys answer. It was th three of us answered. One guy answered first. He's like, yeah, my girl got my password. Next guy who stands next to me, he's like, my girl got my password. And I was like, yeah, my girl got my password. And he's like, never. I'll never let my girl have my password. So it was a, it was a pause for a second. And I asked him, I was like, why not? I think that I think why not is not a question that people ask enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got it. Well, why not? Mm -hmm. I was like, why not? It just feels right. And he was like, I just feel like there is a level of privacy that is involved in every single relationship that should be respected. I appreciated that answer. Mm -hmm. Right? Pause there. I get that. Pause there. Mm -hmm. First question for you guys is how do you guys feel about privacy within a relationship? Before we dive into everything, how do you guys feel about privacy within your relationships? I believe privacy is needed for both parties in the relationship. Um, I think it's important for the health of the relationship. Uh, but I also think that there are like guidelines to privacy. You know what I mean? Like, let's just use something as simple as being in the bathroom with the door closed, mm -hmm. right? Right. The, the, the guideline is, you know, don't come into the bathroom, right? But if you need to knock and come in, you can come, you can come in, right? But I may be in here taking this. Okay. okay. You know what I mean? So don't come up, don't come up in here, right? So that's the guideline. But that doesn't mean that you, you know, you cannot come in. So I think, you know, privacy is important and it's for the health of the relationship, but there has to be important guidelines that go into it. So even talking about uh, the phone and the password. So it's like my wife has my password, but it's not like she's just picking up my phone and going through it. And even if she does want to go through it, she's going to ask me to go through it first, right? Because that's where our relationship is at. So that's like the guideline. The guideline, I'm not giving you the password so you could just go and abuse that. And abuse that. Now you're abusing the privacy. Now you're outside of the guidelines of the privacy, right? So I think, you know, as long as that there are guidelines in place for every relationship with privacy, I think that's important to have. But if you don't have the guidelines, if you guys don't have the conversation, then privacy could get real gray, you know? So that's yeah, how, how I look at it, man, is pretty much privacy should not be enforced, but it should be respected. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm not going to push hard to keep the things I'm doing, talking about passwords, things like that, a secret. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to expect you to just uphold your respect for my privacy. Mm -hmm. That's it. But you're going to have access. Yep. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have access. And you're going to have access because, you know, if you're someone that I really see myself being with forever, right? That means you're someone who at some point is going to need to have access to something in case of an emergency. Yep. Okay. That means you um, at some point may not be able to reach your phone and you need to use mine. Okay. That means uh, I trust you and I expect you to trust me. Okay. And that means that, you know, you and I, if we're going to do this forever, or we think we're going to do this forever, we need to feel like we have open access to 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 know what's going on with each other's life if mm -hmm. for whatever reason we want to go there all right so that's why i think it's important um i think that when people are hesitant to give up passwords and stuff like that it's just because one reason we have the luxury of saying because respect we have we, we have the luxury of saying mm -hmm. y'all want to respect we have the luxury you know there's so many other things but it's really because one reason okay Unless you are embezzling money and you don't want to tell your woman, right? It's only one reason. It's because you just don't want to get caught up. Perfect. Yeah. Right. You just want to get caught it, up. Right. How do you feel about it first? How do I feel about it? Yeah. I mean, I literally could echo you guys' sentiments. Mm -hmm. It'll just take us about 37 mm -hmm. more seconds. Okay. Yeah. You know, so that led us to the conversation of monogamy. And I stepped out and I said, Hey bro, the reason why. I feel like you don't want to share your password and we could gloss over it is because you wouldn't be faithful to your partner. Got a little quiet, you know, got a little quiet. And, and I say that, honestly, I say that out of respect for my relationship. I say that out of respect of the work that I put in for my relationship. And I say that because there, there are men that, probably heard that or there's men that's watching it and it still is like yo y'all crazy for giving y'all partners y'all password mm -hmm. and 
the conversation continued to go and he told me that he said you know what i wouldn't give my girl the password to my phone because you can always find something in somebody's phone that you're going you, that you're not going to like it's like yeah of course like we can still play sure. that game sure you know he's like but i'll give my i'll give my girl you know the password to the safe and i was like because you can't find out that you're cheating in the safe you can't find that out. And it's it's really jaded. Right. It open the safe as money. It might worry about nothing else. Right. There's no deceit in the safe. Yeah. There's no there's no lies in the safe. Yeah. There is there's nothing that she would have to worry about in the safe. And as I'm expressing this, you know, I'm telling them, I said part of the reason why I could give my password to my partner is because my phone looked like how your safe would look. Mm -hmm. there's nothing in my in my phone that will cause me to say nah you can't go through that nah you can't see that and truth be told very similar to you yeah you got my password but i'm not going to sleep and turning over and you know britney's grabbing my phone and, and scrolling through my phone yeah, every yeah. single night yeah. like and i feel like that is the that's the thought that is the the space that people want us to accept and think Oh yeah, because she got your password, she gonna go through your phone. It's like I don't present my partner with that level of insecurity to have to go through my phone in order to ease the way that she's feeling. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I will say this though, I think every woman is gonna go through your phone. Oh, without a oh, doubt, yeah. without a doubt, okay. without a doubt, <laughs> one thousand percent. I think every woman Look. is gonna go through your if she if she can get to your phone and has access. She's gonna go through your phone because even if you even if you're living right, mm -hmm. curiosity. Curiosity. Just just there is just curiosity that's that has nothing to do with you, right? So she's gonna go through your phone. But but what I'm saying is, yo, if you live it right, that's okay. Bruh, quick story. <laughs> quick story. Y'all know I've been I've been in and out. I've been in and out lately. I've been moving, right? Mm -hmm. When I say in and out, like I've been in other cities and stuff like yeah. that. And you know, we in a healthy space in our relationship, right? But women, you know. Still gonna be a woman, right? I gotta leave my, my MacBook at home and my MacBook is attached to my iMessages. Mm -hmm. And recently, like I wanna say like three or four days ago, I just opened up my MacBook. I haven't used it in a couple of days. Open up the MacBook and I click the messages, right? I click the messages and it pops up to like one random message that was in my phone. And the message was from somebody random saying, Hey, I can't wait to see you at the party tonight. I was mm -hmm. like, yo, who is this? And they was I forget what name they said. And I was like, yeah, you got the wrong number. And then they sent a picture. And I was like, wrong number. And left it at that, right? When I opened up my text messages on my computer, that message was open. <laughs> <laughs> that message was open uh, on my computer. You know what I mean? Man. We didn't talk about it. I didn't hear nothing about it, right? Because yeah. there's nothing to talk about, right? So when you're living right, there's nothing to worry about. Yeah, that's what there's I'm saying. There's nothing to worry about. But like you, just to add to your point, bro, no matter what kind of space you're in, bro, yeah. woman, she going to look. Yeah. because She going to look, bro. That's, because, just, that's just what they do. Because sometimes, sometimes women get bored. Yep. All right, and sometimes it, you cannot help it, bro. Especially when you're out of town, it's just like I'm just curious. Yeah, I'm just curious, and and it's one of the. It's, I think it's one of those things that women really struggle with in terms of like, yo, I can't help but just like try to entertain my curiosity right now. Mm -hmm. You know, so even if you give them the password, which is okay, they still want to look. Yeah. Right. But the thing I love is when you're living right, you want them to look. Mm, One thousand percent. Go ahead, look. Please. Go ahead, look. Yep. Go ahead, look. Okay. I dare you look. Yep. Cause, cause, cause when I you dare look, you cause when you look. Because when you look, you lose one. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look. So you said that's something that, that women struggle with, right? I want to talk about what men struggle with. And people ask us all the time, how do you do it? Right? As if we are some sort of supernatural beings. How do you stay monogamous to your partner? How do you stay faithful? How do you do it? What do you do? Right? And... I entertain the conversation, even though I understand that at the end of the day, it's a desire that you got to have yourself. It's nothing that I could just tell you and you just be like, wow, that makes so much sense. I'm going to start being faithful. Like, it just doesn't work like that, right? So why do men struggle with monogamous relationships? Why is it such a struggle? Why is it so difficult? What is it that they're doing wrong? Or even if you want to bring it in, what is it that their partner is doing wrong? That's not allowing them to be 
monogamous. You know, if that's the if that's the game you want to play, because mm. there is sound like Clay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh my God. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. 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 Take oh, some responsibility. Yeah. We're not there yet, huh? Nah, nah, we not there not yet. There yet. Okay. Man, this might come on after that too. <laughs> so, but yeah, man, what what is it that makes men struggle with monogamy? And what is it that makes you feel like you can deal with it? What is it that makes us feel like, like, yo, like I signed up to be monogamous? And let's keep this in mind. We're talking about people who have the desire to be monogamous. People who say, I want a monogamous relationship, but it's difficult for me. Not people who are on the fence, not people who are on the other side. So I do I want to start I want to start with you, Duke. I know that there are tons of men that admire your relationship. You know, a lot of times we see women admire relationships, but Duke, I know there are tons of men that admire your relationship. And I feel like the biggest thing they look at is like, how can a guy be cool and faithful Mm -hmm. where is it that you usually start duke um i think when we talk about why some men struggle with monogamy is we have to really go back and just see how we were socialized we have 20 30 years of habit Mm -hmm. that we've developed and that has been cultivated by society we we were born into a society, a society that gave us points for how many women we slept with. Mm-hmm. I'll take it back. We were born into a society that gave us points for how many numbers we got. Yo, how many numbers did you get? Count them up. Okay, you won. You got six. <laughs> so we've been baked into a, a culture of conquest of women okay so these are things that you know habit is powerful and habit becomes who you are and the reason we so so many of us struggle with monogamy and and women struggle too but just i don't not not at the same rate is because women have to deal with the shame component of it you know Mm -hmm. so when you're dealing with shame you kind of you kind of shy away from it for a long time until you become an adult and you feel liberated and then you start doing your thing but even then there's still sh- a sh- there's still shame associated with it worldwide, but for men it's not the same way, okay? And we don't we don't view ourselves as a sacred vessel the same way that people view women, okay? Um, so one is habit, and then two is we think that it's natural. Mm-hmm. So anything we think is natural, we are not going to have the urgency to change. All right, so until we think that, yeah, first of all, it is natural. It is natural to desire multiple women. It's mm-hmm. natural. All right, what's, I'm not saying it's not natural, but we feel like because it's natural, it's supposed, it's supposed to be like this, and there's nothing we can do about it to change it. And I think as adults, it's become increasingly hard to uh, not be monogamous or to, yeah, it's, it's, been, it's, be, it's become hard to be monogamous just because of so much history that sculpted us, our habits and our mindset, mm-hmm. and just the way we view women. That's, I think, the number one reason. Not to mention it's just hard. It's crazy because, you, I guess, my idea and thought around it kind of coincides with, with yours. So my reason would be men's diet. Right. When I say diet, I mean like the things that we're consuming and the things that we're digesting. Mm-hmm. So when I say my thought kind of coincides with yours, mm-hmm. is because when I think back about being conditioned, some of my earliest memories of uh, of being influenced, which come from the things that I was digesting, mm-hmm. which which fall under music, television, film. Right. One of my favorite movies growing up was How to Be a Player. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even joking. It was like literally one of my favorite movies of like, yo, like I want to be like Bill Bellamy, like that, that idea of, of seeing different girls come in on rotation and stuff like that. Like that thrills like, oh, that's exciting. And that's cool. And that's what people glorify. Right. And when you're young, you see those type of things. You're like, oh, 
those type of things make a lasting impression in your mind that you don't even realize it's, it's making. Like it's making a real imprint in your mind. And so when you're constantly watching uh, films like that or you're listening to music that glorifies men hanging out with multiple women or hanging out with multiple women or just not respecting women to the highest regard, those type of things seep in your head, for right? Sure. So for instance, me and Candace were uh, driving the other day, right? And uh, the music was like on very, very low. And I, but I heard the the melody. The melody. It, it was a bop. I'm like, this, this shit bopping right now. So I turned it up, and uh, it's a Young Thug song. I don't I don't know if it's new or old. Probably old considering this, uh, the situation right now. But anyways, I hadn't heard before, and it's bopping, it's bopping. And some lyric, he said some lyric. Then he said, tu, tu, tu. and me and Candace at the same time, tu, tu, tu. and I turned the music down. I said, wait, so we shooters now, and we kind of laughed it off, and I said, "But that's kind of that's kind of crazy. The influence that music has on you, uh -huh. right? Things that you hear without even recognizing it. And sometimes when you're young, when you're growing, you don't have that kind of social awareness nope. that I had in that moment. In that moment, it was very easy for me to be like, oh, let me just put something else on, mm -hmm. right? But when you're young, you don't necessarily have that awareness. That shit is going in your in one ear, it's seeping in your brain, and something else is coming out on the other end that you may not necessarily like or want to form to. Yeah, for sure. Right, so." I would say like the diet is a huge thing for us, mm -hmm, right? Yeah. And when you're young, you don't know, you don't necessarily understand what you're consuming, yeah. right? But when you get of age and you start understanding, it's like it's for me, it's important to start making shifts or changes in your lives for the things that you're consuming and digesting because yeah. they're gonna make a huge impact in your life, yeah. you know. So like that, that to me, at least for me, for me personally, that's where it's always lied. It's like yeah. the, the things that I'm watching, the things that I'm listening to, because when I don't listen to those things, when I don't watch those certain specific things, I don't have those thoughts, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and that's another, that's another, I'm pretty sure we'll get there, right? Yeah. But like, that's just like avoidance, yeah, yeah. right? Rather than restraint. Yeah. I, I want to speak to both of you guys' points. First, I'll say, I, I heard our conditioning in, 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 even the the what we feel like is the correction, um, I feel like desire is a dangerous place. Mm -hmm. I don't think that I don't think we desire other people. I think we could think about other people, but when we say desire, that's like a sitting there and you kind of wishing and you kind of hoping and you kind of want that, and that is that goes into the conditioning that we spoke about. Yeah, growing up watching the things that we watched, watching how to be a player, desiring to want to be Bill Bellamy, desiring to want to be Bill Bellamy. Yeah. Not just thinking about it, because thinking is, you can't control your thoughts. They're more fleeting things. But your desire is something that you're almost kind of meditating on yourself, mm -hmm. right? So you can, even be, you can even be faithful in your relationship, but desiring other people, that even gets into when you almost kind of operating in the space of lust. lust. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, we are... Even even biblically, that's a place that you don't want to play around mm -hmm. with, right? And as you say, you thought about how to be a player growing up. I can't think about, even though it was still things that was happening, but I could think about the wood, right? And one of the things that was super dope about the wood was, of course, it showed Mike trying to go after these girls and talk to these girls and things like that, but his friends praised them when he got that one number at the dance. Mm -hmm. And he was like, man, I got like 10 numbers. He's like, man, I only got six. And he was like, well, I just got this one. He said, that's worth 10 of them numbers. That's worth 10 of them numbers. And th it's messages like that in our childhood that I feel like if we would have adopted messages like that, we would have even been able to build the person that we said that we want up even more. Sooner. Sooner. Yeah. Much sooner. Right? So when I think about these struggles, and I think about what makes it so hard for men to be monogamous. It's so much that that it's it's, a, it's I feel like the spectrum could go top to bottom. You could have a dog, a, you could have a hundred guys call you with a hundred different problems. You could have fifteen friends call you with fifteen different problems. And I said, you know what? Let me just focus on these two avatars here that I could think about and key in on these two avatars and talking about it on a high level again we're talking about people who desire to be monogamous yeah and i was thinking about 
There is a space where certain men don't trust their partner with their sexual desires. And I say desires, whether it is the type of sex that you want, or it could even be the frequency. Mm -hmm. A man might feel like he can intimidate his partner with when he openly communicates about his sexual desires. So there's a, there's a lack of trust on his end. So that man might step out because he's not communicating what his needs truly are. Mm -hmm. Because whether it's shame, whether it's the embarrassment of this is, this is the way that I do like it. This is how often I do like to have sex. There are so many communication barriers that have to be broken before you guys are really talking about sex in a really open way, right? I think it's unfortunate that we have to get to the space of falling flat on our face mm -hmm. before we feel comfortable about talking about these transgressions that are, th are these things that are looked at as transgressions. So I think that's one avatar. I feel like this is a very small percentage of people. I do not feel like most men step out because any issues that's going on in the bedroom at home. Perfect. So there's a pendulum to that. I think there's some men who are completely satisfied. Mm -hmm. They're getting everything they want. Mm -hmm. They're getting everything they need. Mm -hmm. They're getting it when they need it. Mm -hmm. They're getting it how they need it. And they, mm -hmm. they just want something else. And they want something else. Mm -hmm. And I think that goes right into the exact avatar that you guys were talking about. Mm -hmm. Th that This person that we're talking about, this avatar... I feel is someone who could possibly be struggling with identity. And the reason why I say that is because when, even though you could be sure about wanting to be monogamous, what if you're unsure about who you are, right? And if you find yourself uncertain about who you are, you could almost find yourself not loving yourself in a particular phase in your life. And when you don't love yourself, mm. you make careless decisions that hurt other people that you love. Yeah. Right? So I feel like that that could be part of it too for that particular avatar. It's just like yeah. the the quest or the the search for the identity that hasn't been found yet. Yeah. Because when you're really sure and confident about who you are as a man, it's a little easier to make those decisions with a sound mind. Yeah. Right? Even though you have uh these feelings or quote unquote desires, you know, when you're sure about yourself, you won't make that decision. You won't jeopardize the one good thing, the greatest thing that you have going for you at home. Yeah. I, I, I don't think it has anything to do with, I mean, identity, yes, but I still don't think identity is a thing. You don't. Right. I don't think identity is a thing. Um, I don't think it's a matter, it's a matter of like, when I say it's a small percentage, yes, I understand it happens, but like, I think most men who um, who want to be monogamous that that step out, it's not an issue of you know my wife not giving me what I want or I'm uncomfortable speaking about what I really want, right? I think it comes that we can't talk about this without talking about what's led to it, mm. right? It's the reason the reason you wanted to be like Bill Bellamy is because they made it cool, yeah. The reason we want the girls is because the athletes made it cool to be around girls. Mm -hmm. The rap video, how many of them show they one girl, their wife? It's just girls around. It's just hella girls. It's just girls around. So yeah. the images that we're seeing growing up are images of coolness. Mm -hmm. So monogamy was not made cool. Yeah. Monogamy is very actually boring, right? That to to the to the world, the way that it paints it is boring. Mm -hmm. And the only people that practice it are people who aren't cool. Or attractive. <laughs> yep. That's what it's that's what it's painted to be. So we grew up in a space where nah, where we kids, we're very impressionable. We grew up in the space where nah, we want to be cool. We want social status. We want validation. This is a lifelong or for years long practice that has been going on. So by the time we get to adulthood, even if we want to be faithful, even if we want to be monogamous. We're still fighting things that we never learn how to deal with. And I think the reason that most of us, and then, and then we got to talk about anatomy. Physically, our bodies are aroused by women. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we got to learn how to control that. If we never learn how to control that, we never learn how to control it because we never thought it was something that was wrong. So I think that those are the main reasons 
why so many of us struggle. And then, and then not to mention pornography. We've been, we've been watching porn since we were kids, mm -hmm. since little boys. So now we're adults and that hasn't gone away. Porn is maximized. It's gotten better. It's gotten better. <laughs> it's, it's gotten easier to it's access. More, it's, more, access. <laughs> it's more accessible, right? So think about if you were, when you started watching porn at 12 years old, 13 years old, the magazines at 10 years old, and you spent 20, 30 years fantasizing over women, mm -hmm. you think you're gonna get in a relationship and just be able to turn it off. It does not work like that. Not. At no point in time have you been training yourself to say, nah, like, I gotta, I gotta practice self restraint in the face of other women, and not to mention the, 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 um, the opportunities and the images and the media that trigger our lust mm -hmm. are more profound than ever before. I think everything you're saying is true. Everything you're saying is a hundred percent true. I also still feel like at the end of the day, everything boils down to a choice. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't remember how how in how to how did how to be a player end. Oof. I don't know. Oh yeah, uh, was it that he, party? Nah. So uh, he ended up uh, cheating. Homegirl came home. She saw the draws. Oh, that's right. That's right. Got you. And that's how he tried I ended. to get his girl back. Yeah. Uh -huh. He tried yeah, to get yeah. his main girl his back. Main. So that's how it ended. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm I'm unfamiliar with that. My ending with guys who were associated as players. And I'll go, I'll go Will Smith, right? Fresh Prince of Bel Air. He was every woman who was somebody in Hollywood came through that show at some point in time. I really resonated with his seasons with Lisa, right? These were the same images that I seen growing up. Mm -hmm. Everything you're saying is true. I, I again, the conditioning of what's out there is absolutely true. However, you got it on the other side too. Mm -hmm. They had positive relationships that you could have dove into and seen. Like I look at it as you were talking, it made me think about we probably got we got fast food every single everywhere. All of us eat healthy. Mm -hmm. Everywhere. But we made a choice to do that. Yeah. We're also but, talking but about now. Also 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 the question is like, hey, why do men struggle with yeah. monogamy? Right? We we like we ain't talking about a small percentage. We just talking about the general population right. of people, mm -hmm. right? Most people do struggle with fast mm -hmm. food. So again, you know what I'm saying? Fact, again, most people do struggle perfect. with fast food. But what I'm getting to is I think most men struggle with with monogamy because the same exact way where where men want to knock women about lacking accountability, mm -hmm. I feel like men lack accountability in that space. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, well, man, you know, a man gonna do what a man gonna do. Oh man, you know, it's more it's more women than men anyway. So, you know, this is just this is just kind of like what it is. And I just feel like, and and I'm I'm gonna say this, I participate in monogamy. Mm -hmm. But if you're somebody and you don't want to be monogamous, I don't, but don't lie. Mm -hmm. My biggest problem is with the deceit of the lack of monogamy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's where my biggest problem is. Yeah. It's not you. If you want to mess with multiple women and you, then that's yeah. your prerogative. Put it yeah. on the table. Put it on the table. Yeah. 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 Keep a P. Put it on the table. My yeah. problem is the deceit that goes behind the lack of monogamy yeah. and the struggle with it. Because for me, a struggle is... Like, man, this is something that I'm really not trying to do, and it just keeps happening. Bro, you can't say I'm struggling with it and you're the one that's reaching out to people. Because now you want me to you want me to 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 take away your lack of accountability yeah. in that space when it comes to your struggle. So I know we're talking about why men struggle with monogamy, but I also need to call us out on that. Mm -hmm. I need to call us out on, bro, you lack accountability. Mm -hmm. You lack accountability in who you told somebody you were going to be. You told somebody you were going to be monogamous. That's what you said when you said, like, hey, yo, yo, I'm feeling you. You feeling me. We've been talking for some time. Yeah, so I want to rock. I don't think that's lack of account. That's lack of a commitment. No. You, that's lack of a, because because when you get caught cheating, you own up to it. You broke the commitment. You own up to it, Not, you, right? Yeah. You don't you don't point the finger at no one else. You own up to it. You say, who yo. Who owns up to it? I think a that's man. a small percentage. I think most people are gonna be like, she, nah. She, she be hitting me. I don't even be. Nah, I think you think, I think that people just be I owning up to when, it. I think when you get caught cheating as a red, man, you talking about caught red handed. You got to get caught, bro. I'm, we, 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 are we talking about if you get caught cheating as a man, bro? Uh huh. Just like you might, yo, oh, damn, like I fucked that up. I think take it to the grave came from that situation. We talking about getting caught cheating, or we talking about yo not getting caught and still cheating? 
I'm talking about because when you and also when you say getting caught, right? Mm-hmm. Getting caught. What exactly do you mean? Okay, let's rewind it because because <laughs> when you say you don't think men have enough accountability in cheating, okay? I don't think no I, no no I don't think men have enough accountability for their actions that lead to cheating. So when somebody catches you for cheating and you saying like, man, I'm struggling, like, bro, you weren't accountable even getting to the space. So I can receive that. I can receive that. None of that changes the things that I'm saying though. I don't right? think it. No, I think everything yeah. you're saying is 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 completely completely a hundred percent spot on. What I'm saying is I'm holding men accountable because I don't feel like men are being held accountable. Like, again, like we're saying it's being normalized and, you know, it's because it's, it's because um, their circle, their supportive group is not holding them accountable. It's like what what good does it? What good does it if we hold a man that we don't know accountable? There is no accountability for someone you don't know. I got you. OK, cool. So so when we talking about why do men struggle with monogamy, we got to just identify there are layers. Yeah. yeah. The, the base layer layers. is the habits and things we've learned. Mm -hmm. Okay. As we get older and then we can start saying, yo, your friends are terrible. Yeah. Uh, um, you put in your place and you put your, just your decisions, mm -hmm. right? The environment you're going to, yep. right? That's but, crazy. It's, but it's layers. It's layers. Yeah. Okay. But I'm just, I'm just talking about the foundation of why we even in this situation as adults, why it's, it's hard. Right, it's it's like it's the same way where you. It's, it's, I was gonna say Tony scared of dogs, but Tony never bit by he never got bit by a dog. I don't think so. Right, but it's the same way where I could like almost drown when I was five years old, ten years old, and then be afraid of water at forty. Yeah, you feel know I me? Mean? Because something in my past is controlling or influencing my behavior as an adult. Mm -hmm. That's that's all it is, right? But of course, it's decisions. Of course, it, everything comes down to your decision. But I would never, like, I would never take a man's word and say, "Yo, do you want to be faithful?" And he's like, "Yeah." And like, okay, cool. All you gotta do is be faithful. Don't work like that. Don't work like that. Don't work like that. It's not just want to. It's actual practical, pr yeah. pra pra practical things. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. Cool. Practical things. So what? Are, what? Are, what are some of those? <laughs> what? Are, what? Are, what are those? What are some of those practical things? Right, because I think we we already yeah we we dove into the the struggle yeah that men have. But what are some of the practical things that men can do to get away from the struggle? Well, the, well, one thing I said was like like weed yourself off porn, mm -hmm. like stop watching porn because it's conditioning you to like be lustful. Yep, you know, and you're not able to set boundaries with yourself, and because when you watch porn, you you try to take yourself into another realm mm -hmm. and almost like envision yourself Ready player with one. another woman. Okay, yeah. we, we we talking we talking real right here. Yeah. Okay, so most men are watching porn with an end goal, for sure. Okay. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Cool. So, and, and are you telling them to eliminate that end goal that they're trying to get? I'm telling them that that act of watching porn has a a negative impact, a destructive impact in your relationship. Right in the way you the way you look at women, yeah. Right in your ability to connect to, with to, your woman, to connect with your woman and be disciplined to to not desire other women. Yeah, there's a direct connection with there. Yeah, there is. because yeah. you're not even training your mind to to put blockers on other women. So that's the first thing I would do. Like, hey, yo, get off porn, right? Mm -hmm. And because no one talks about it, it's really hard to be like, yo, I need to get off porn. Yeah, because everyone's doing it in the dark. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Yep. So like. If you're not talking about it, it's not like it's shameful to be like, yo, like if you if like if I caught you watching porn, I'm like, yo, what you doing, bro? Yeah. So what I'm saying is everything you said is something that enters the second layer. That's that's what enters people's subconscious. Mm -hmm. Right? What mm -hmm. I'm saying is people are doing it mm -hmm. in order for an end goal. Yes. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. People are doing right? it for for end goal. So if they still want to achieve their end goal, is is the end goal, is that the problem <laughs> as well? <laughs> Is that the problem as well? Yeah, 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 yeah. But we're talking about practical steps. Right? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm so, just giving you the actual action, right? I'm right, just giving okay, you the actual okay. action. Because I say, yo, stop designing other women. Okay, cool. Yeah, obviously. Or stop like trying to uh -huh. get a nut off. All right, cool. But hey, look, here's how you get to that point, right? Copy. We got to get Copy. to the foundation of it. We got to get to the foundation of it. And then the other thing is, all right, cool. Now we're talking, now we talking um, how you showing up in your relationship. You know what I'm saying? Like, are you, are you, are you, okay, so 
when do people when do people cheat the most? Let's just say, let's just say after after the club, late night. Well, I can't even know. You you never know. You but never know. What I'm saying when do people meet people, right? Out. You meet people out. So look, yo, stop going to the club, going and then going to the after spot. Because you tricking you, you conditioning your mind to want more. Chasing hey, the night. Man, you know, it's so chasing crazy. the night. You're chasing the night, bro. As as you said that, I'm so disconnected. I'm like, when when do they do that? I'm I'm I got on the edge of my seat. Yeah. When, when do they do what? Yeah, I know. Like, I'm trying to figure out like, like, when like, when does that happen? <laughs> like, yeah. I, 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 and I say that to say, I couldn't imagine, I'm like, hey, babe, I'm finna roll to the club, and then I'm gonna go to the after spot, and I just don't even see me, and I'm sure we'll get to there, I don't see me in the position to even do any of those things. I don't, in a relationship, I don't even desire to do those things. Right, right, right. right. So, right. but granted, I'm speaking from a place of privilege. I got you. Yes. Because this is, this is, there is, there are men who do desire to do those things, so- yeah, I, and you know what? Like, I'm gonna get back to it, but you know, I'm just thinking about how many men hear these types of conversations on these types of platforms and immediately dismiss the conversation Turn it off because we're not speaking to their um, undisciplined. Okay, it's like, nah, this is what we're supposed to do. Okay, but the problem is. People don't really look at this stuff as destructive. They just look at it as like, nah, I just made a mistake. But this shit could really ruin your life, mm-hmm. right? Stepping out of your woman mm-hmm. could really empty your bank account. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Stepping out, stepping out of your woman could like bring you a child that you didn't want. Yeah. So like, there you are diseases there, incurable. There are destructive. No, there's there's crazy ramifications. There's ramifications to yep. this thing. So it's not just like, hey, yo. Yo, it's not just, it's not a simple, yo, just be a man and love a woman. It's not that. It's not just that simple. There's like, hey, yo, we're literally, these are things that if you practice can really help you out in the long run and save you a ton of stress. The, the way I look at things is like, yo, if my relationship fails, it's not going to be because monogamy. It's not going to be because like monogamy. Mm-hmm. It can't be. Because like, it's just. Uh, it's so much bigger fish to fry, man. You learn and that. Not, not that, right? And then what I'm saying is like, it's not. And again, people would think like, what? It's just, it's just cheating, bro. It's, it's, it's risky. Mm-hmm. Like it's risky. You, you, you know, saying it's risky. It is. I don't think people talk about the emotional risk Mm-mm. as much. Even if you do, quote unquote, get away with it. Mm-hmm. When you're connected with your partner, That's bro. On your conscience, boy. There guilt. is there is a level of guilt that you're going to walk around with that your partner's going to feel and can't make it out. Mm-hmm. And it's going to cause so much more turmoil in your relationship. And when people do eventually break up and they just like, man, we broke up because she was doing such and such. And it's just like, we could say that. But that time when you cheated and she didn't know what was going on and she could feel that emotional block, that's kind of what was the beginning of the separation for yeah. you guys. That was the downfall. That was really, really like the downfall. I, I think about that those things. Yeah. I think about making sure that I can keep my partner in the same exact way where we we provide. We provide and we just think it's a financial space. But like providing that emotional security is crazy important for me, bro. Like it's super important for me. Matter of fact, it's so important for me, and I'll be honest with you guys, that when I feel like I didn't do what I'm supposed to do and I feel like she's not good emotionally, it makes me anxious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what can I do? Mm-hmm. And I could one of my homeboys, he he's 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 like one of the most amazing human beings that I know. Like when women say, I don't think there's good guys anywhere, I feel like I wish I could pull him out of my back pocket like a Pokemon. Like, I choose you, show her. <laughs> it, this dude is just like he's such a he's like man I could never cheat on my girl if I cheat on my girl I would tell her immediately like I, I wouldn't be able to live with that I, mm-hmm. I couldn't have that on me and he's he's just so genuine man and it's a place where I, I just I admire him because he's he hasn't been tainted with the type of mm-hmm. past mm-hmm. that we have the type of conditioning that we have stepping out is not even in in the thought process, thankfully, I grew up around men to where stepping out that wasn't something that was normal. Mm-hmm. I feel for the men who grow up around men who that is normal, and they're like, "Yo, I, I want to try that's monogamy." The yeah. Th- that's the example. That's not my example. Yeah, you know. Speaking of, was what was the example of men as it pertains to monogamy in you guys' lives? 
what made you guys choose this, which is, I would say, is definitely um, the harder route. I think it's the more fruitful, but it's definitely the more difficult route. What made you guys choose monogamy? Was it your influences that you had, or how did your influences influence you guys? I was I hadn't had to look no further than my dad. I mean, my dad has set an incredible example. And even though my mother and my dad, my mother and my dad uh, divorced, right? Just seeing the devotion and how locked in they were, even though it was only, I mean, not only, it was 14 years, you know, it's a, it's a minute. It's a long time. It's a long time. It's unfortunate they didn't make it, but seeing the devotion um, and the the courage that he led the relationship with every day, um, that was inspiring for me. That was like, Yo, this is exactly what you want for your life. You want um, a wife so you could build a, a family with, have kids with, and live a fruitful, have a fruitful life and relationship. Um, there's also, I think, a couple episodes, a few episodes back too, like I touched on just a few different guys that were around my neighborhood, fathers in the neighborhood that, at least at the time, mm -hmm. had well-respected families that were in committed relationships um, and dialed in. So... I mean, thankfully, even though didn't come from uh, neighborhoods or communities or families or groups that, you know, had that were affluent, had a lot of money and things like that. But what I did see is like how to truly treat and respect a woman and how to be monogamous and how to be locked into a relationship. And even though I only short, saw it for a short period of time, these are just like my teenage years, you know, me where I'm able to recognize it and see it. But for me, it's my my dad first. And then just the other men that he had around me. So I think too, what's also important, what was dope, is without he even without him even recognizing him, kind of kind of filtering mm -hmm. like the who people was around. who was around, who was around, and maybe not even they those guys probably weren't even his friends. Those guys were my dad's, my my friend's dads, mm -hmm. and he just befriended them yeah. in the, at the time, and that's who he would hang with. But him doing the fil filtration. You know, around and making sure that that was his filter system still too. So, like, who are these guys? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. I think that was important. That was important, and th that those were the examples that I needed. Even despite me watching How to Be a Player and it being my favorite movie, right? Now, don't get me wrong. As I'm growing up and I'm starting to um, engage in different relationships, like I'm struggling because I see the life that my dad's living, but I'm also heavily influenced, heavily influenced by the shit that I'm watching on TV. You know. Um, and those things, honestly, I didn't get a hold of those things till I became well off into my twenties. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like growing up in in high school, college, like, oh man, I'm a menace. I'm a menace. I'm a menace because even though I had a great example to look to, I wasn't following it. Right? There becomes a time I feel like, and sometimes in in, in young men's lives where there's just like some rebellion happening, and the rebellion could be could be from anything, you know what I mean? Different things going on in your lives or whatever. I don't know. But not having an outlet to articulate what's going on could lead you to making, you know, childish decisions or doing things outside of your character or how you were raised or, you know what I mean? Like outside of your core values that you were taught to believe in and, and live by. Um, so, you know, I, I, I think that that's, for me, that that's where it lies. Like I, I can't, I don't see it any other way, you know, other than when I say I don't see it any other way, like I don't, I didn't see any other, any other influences in my life that made an impact stronger than my dad mm -hmm. or the, the men that were mm -hmm. around. Yeah. I think mostly trial and error for me. Um, I grew up seeing my, my dad and my mom weren't together, but a lot of my aunties and uncles were together. So I grew up seeing family structure. I didn't necessarily equate that to being faithful or being committed, mm -hmm. but I just saw my auntie and uncles around all, all the time. So at least there was that foundation of what I think I wanted to be when I grew up. I think I wanted a wife, mm -hmm. right? But a lot of it came from trial and error. You know, growing up playing playing sports, and then going to college, and then being in a fraternity, and then also being a part of the Nigerian community, and you know. It was just a whirlwind of just, yo, know, be, just use testosterone. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just like take take advantage of everything you've worked for. So that was that. And when I said trial and error, man, it was just, yo, know, I mean, in my previous relationships, man, I've stepped out, mm -hmm. you know? And and I think that those didn't work out. Yeah. 
You get what I'm saying? So you kind of look at the evidence and just look at what results that it's yielded and you make a decision that say, yo, I don't want to keep keep doing this. And if I'm going to put effort into somebody and I am going to, um, if I really want to cultivate the type of relationship that I think I do, then I can't do silly things like that. All right. So that was my mindset. It's just a trial and error. Uh, and then also being a man of my word, I think is embarrassing now. Yeah. So if I say I'm gonna commit to you and I don't commit to you, to me that's embarrassing for me. Yeah. Right. So some women will say it's embarrassing for the world, but to me, I would be embarrassed today if I was who I was mm -hmm. and I got caught stepping out. I would mm -hmm. be embarrassed. Mm -hmm. It would be hard for me to like be confident in living my truth and speak to people, Same. knowing that y'all I'm out here mm -hmm. like stepping out because for me it says like, oh, you're not a man of your word. That's what it says for me, and I want to be a man of my word because I want respect. Mm -hmm. My number one thing in the world, in this world, I want respect. And I think that wanting respect, wanting to be a man of my word, you know what I'm saying? Wanting to, wanting to my relationship to reach its highest potential, okay? There's no way it could reach its highest potential if I'm not putting the highest amount of work into the relationship, mm -hmm. right? So me stepping out would be me like trying to shortcut the relationship. Yeah. Another thing is this too, because I hear a lot of people saying things like, yo, what if she cheats on you? What if she's stepping out or you don't know what she's doing? It doesn't change anything, right? My goal in my relationship is to be as committed to it as possible, is to give the most effort as possible, and then I'll live with the results, Yeah. okay? And then whatever happens from that, happens from that. But I'm, I'm not here to only be faithful as long as she's faith, faithful, right? Because that has nothing to do with me. So I am here to be committed because I want to be here. And I think that that's kind of... What's gotten me to this point and what's helped me develop a lot of the things that I've developed over the years. Mm -hmm. What about you? Um, you know, growing up seeing a lot of successful and healthy relationships actually mm -hmm. kind of can it can it can work against you a little bit mm -hmm. as well. Because you see happy, you see successful, you see people are good, and then every now and again you'll see a couple, they just get a divorce. And you're just like, whoa. My perception of relationship growing up was so naive i thought you get to a certain age you meet one woman that you like you guys both like each other you guys get married and essentially you guys kind of ride off into the sunset together you guys live happily ever after i don't feel like there was enough conversations from elders to young people on what relationship truly looks like and what it truly feels like and the roller coasters that you'll go through and the emotions and the fleeting emotions and the desires that could change and the, the outside influences that have an impact on relationships. Those were never things that I ever thought about. They were never, ever communicated to me. And I just assumed, yo, when you like a girl, that's the only girl that you're going to ever like. Mm -hmm. I remember when my thought process of that was actually tainted. Mm -hmm. It didn't happen for me until I was 19 years old. I was talking to this girl and somebody was like, yo, talk to this girl too. I'm like, nah, bro. Like if I like somebody, I don't need to talk to anybody else. That was literally my thought process. Mm -hmm. And I feel like at some point in time, we all have that same thought process. Mm -hmm. If I'm talking to somebody and I like them, I don't need to talk to anybody else. Mm -hmm. Right. This girl then goes and messes with somebody else in the midst of that. And like, it hit me to where I was just like, people can do that. People can say that they like you to your face, say that this is us, and go and talk to somebody else. And that literally was the beginning of understanding the impact that people can serve on your, your emotions, on how you feel about things. So when I sit down and I like think about cheating and the impact of it, you can literally ship, shift somebody's entire life by stepping out on them in your selfish acts mm -hmm. you can literally shift somebody's entire thought process you can shift somebody from saying hey yo you know what i want to be in a relationship for love to like hey yo you know what i'm only gonna be in a relationship with somebody if they could give me what i need i'm and i feel like that is exactly why we see women in relationships with men just for money because something happened emotionally there to where they're like, okay, that love. I'm not, I'm not that, giving that up again. I'm not giving that up again. Mm -mm. I won't feel that. That not, love. Not only that, they it's because they fell in love for love. Yes. That that happened. Yep. Yes. So that's and the that, reason now. 
And that right there, that made me think about that story because how you said, Duke, like, hey, yo, like, no matter what you do, this is how I'm going to move forward. And I was on a I was on a panel discussion and we were talking about, hey, do people still marry for love or do they marry for essentially money or what you could do for me? And there were so many people saying like, no, we're going to marry for money that I was actually I'm like, yo, am I that naive to be sitting here thinking that love is a possibility? And I was like, I had to ask, I had to ask, I said, yo, you know what? Like I hear it and I'm not mad at it for, you know, you wanting to get your security, but when you were, you know, a seven year old girl and you were having your crushes and you oh, thought you about love, love, is the, is, is this what you envisioned or is this no something way. that you transitioned to? No way. And everybody said, this is something I transitioned to. And I was like, so if you could get exactly what seven year old you wanted, as far as when it comes to like, yo, this is my Prince Charming and this is who I'm going to be with and this is who I'm going to love. Would you do that? The answer is always yes. Mm -hmm. But there's, there is, like you said, there's something that happens along the way to where you like, this is how I'm going to now operate. Yep. And being able to pinpoint that moment of like, hey, yo, this is what shifted me. This is what shifted me. This is what changed me. And you got to be honest with yourself in that. Yeah. Because that shifted me. That next relationship after that, oh, I was stepping out. And see, and that's where too, like understanding that shift or understanding when that happens that's when you're even more vulnerable to the things that you consume. That just, like that's when now you're really yep. like now you're really hearing, uh, yeah, I got I, whatever the lyric is, two bitches. Not, not, now it's really resonating with you mm -hmm. in your head. You know what I mean? Because you're hurt. That that like you have to have that awareness in your life, and that awareness is it only comes with what Duke was talking about earlier: experience and getting the reps of dating people and going the ups and downs of emotions of relationships. Because bro. You take one, have one bad turn in a relationship, bro, and before you know it, you're spiraling. Yeah. You know, things that you're consuming, things that you're watching. You know, you don't even believe in the things that you used to believe in. Like, at what point in your life did you come back to that 19-year-old self? How far, like, how many years went by after Shorty decided to d date somebody else? Did you come back to the line that you were at 19? Yeah. I'm, I, would be, I would be embarrassed to even say. You see what I'm saying? You spiral, you, yeah. We spiral quick, bro. Mm -hmm. We spiral quick and and for a long time. Yep. So you know why though? Well, pro probably all the, uh, the lack of uh, like mentors too, and okay. like older people to look up to. I'm, I'm so perfect. Typically, when we spiral, we go to the place that's gonna provide us the most comfort. Yeah. So while you're in your spiral, you're around other people that's spiraling, but yep. they just doing it a little bit cooler, or they might have been in the spiral place a little longer. So you'd be like, oh, it's normal. Yeah, uh -huh. and it feels like an escape. Yeah, no, it's good. And for and it's for good. and for that period of time, the other real shit in your life doesn't exist. But you don't even know that though. Mm -hmm. That's the thing to go from. Nah, man, people don't cheat on people. And then you see this happen, and then now you're in a space, and you're around that space. Now you're around the space of, nah, bro. You know what your problem is? You gave her too much. You gave her too much credit. This is why you got to have a gang of chicks at the same time. So if like one of them do it, like you don't even feel that. You just let her go. And that is, that's, that's how you now like, oh, this is how I protect myself. Mm -hmm. Cause everything, everything we do is for protection. Hmm. This is how I, I'm oh, okay. Cool. Oh, cool. Matter of fact, this girl that I'm talking to, she doing that. And see, look, and look, bro, when you don't know who you are, you will easily go with that. Yeah. You're going to be like, you know what? You right. But if you knew who you are, you'd be like, nah, bro. Like that was a bad situation for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm gonna move on. I'm gonna collect my pick up my heart. I'm gonna move on and I'm I'm gonna try the shit again. But bro, when you don't know who you are, you'll be like, you fucking right. I'm down. I'm with the shit now. So so the protection thing, right? Uh -huh. So what you said about um a woman falls in love and then you know somebody steps out of her and then she's like, nah, I'm not doing it again. And now I'm just I'm only dealing with people for money. Mm -hmm. Right? It, that's you consider that protection too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll consider it protection because protecting your emotions mm -hmm. and then trying to trying to say like, nah, well, I gotta make sure that I'm stable, right? Uh -huh. Or let's say, let's say you were with somebody and you guys lost everything and you'd be like, I don't want to feel that ever again. Uh -huh. Everything is going off of it's we can use protection, we can use survival, we can use whatever it is, whatever word that you want to use in that space, mm -hmm. we could use it. And we've all we've all done something to where you're like, hey. That's not right. For example, let me guys give you an example. When you guys, let's say you guys break up with a chick when you guys was younger, 
What's the first place you go to? MySpace. You said the internet? <laughs> okay, cool. Let's call it, let's say the club. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Hey, matter of fact, hey, oh, you single? Hey, bro, hey, roll with us tonight, yeah. right? Yeah. Now we're going to go to the club where it's a room full of empty people yep. that had the same experience as you, mm -hmm. looking for the same getaway as you. Mm -hmm. Now that becomes your new normal. Mm -hmm. So now you in this space and you meet a chick in that space and now you guys ride off into the sunset together and now you guys now have to hash out both of those things that you guys came, came into that make, space yep. with. Yeah. Wow. So like, yeah. where you, the, and when I say where you meet somebody, I'm not talking about the physical place. I'm talking about where you meet somebody mm -hmm. Is so important, bro. Where your heart is at when you meet somebody is so important. And what I'm saying is the damage that is done to you. And this is why people say like, man, you got to heal. You got to heal. Most men don't heal their whore. Yeah. So before we even get to the space of healing, healing. we ran through. We, boy, we, yeah. go, we go way back. We go way back. So we may <laughs> just take one step forward and feel a little bit better and be like, okay, I'm good now. But you're not. Done no work, that bro. girl when you was 19 still got you doing some of the things that you do. Mm -hmm. That girl that you was when you was 19 still got you saying, I'm not giving this girl my password to my phone. I, I can't do that. I can't, I can't be that open and vulnerable with somebody anymore. I think it's so important for men, if you are struggling with being faithful, create pillars that your relationship is is literally sits on. Mm -hmm. This is one of the most important things that I learned. Because when you are confused about where to go, you can always revert back to your pillars. One of the most important things for me is vulnerability. It's hard to step out if you're being completely vulnerable. Trust. Mm -hmm. That's another one that we have our, our pillars on. And in being vulnerable and in being trusting, it's like, why would I not give my password to my partner? If I trust her and I'm being vulnerable with who I say that I am, why wouldn't I give her my password? And then you start looking at things that you created. That's why I think it's so important. Accountability. When I look at the things that's going to hold me accountable, it's things that I created. So we said we're going to be vulnerable. We're going to be trusting. There's other things as well. But if vulnerability and trust is at the center of it, I don't see how I can say, I don't trust you with that. I'm not being accountable to what I said I'm going to do in this relationship. So it, it's, man... I'm actually very passionate about this topic, fellas. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about this right now, man. It's it's if you could give anything to somebody who is literally on the brink. Let's say they are going through arguments in their relationship. They say, "I want the relationship, but I'm going through arguments, and it's tough, man. It's tough, bro. Like these girls are getting more and more desirable to me every time I scroll through my social media. They're getting more and more desirable. Yeah. What you gonna tell them, man? It, specifically talking about that, yep. I'm saying, yo, you got to long press and put the not interested on the on the explore page. You filter. You got to filter. You got okay. You got to change the algorithm. Yep. That's what you got to do. And and the platform is set up and it allows you to do so. Yeah. Yep. You got you got to change your algorithm because you're seeing too much. Yep. And it's making you think and it's yep. triggering. It's triggering your emotions and you, and it's making you think that you're missing out on something. Mm -hmm. That's what it's making you do. And that's the worst thing. That's like the worst place to be is to to feel like you're missing out. All right, you don't never want to feel like you're missing out because you'll start going to look for something. You'll start trying to explore, and you'll start looking for opportunities to like, hey, yo, let me just dabble a little bit. And next thing you know, a like turns into a, a follow. Mm -hmm. Follow and turns into a DM. A follow turns into a DM. Right? As soon as you DM, hi, you busted. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, you busted. That, that's that's stepping out. Yeah. 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 So so another thing is like the actual act of sexual intercourse doesn't have to happen. Yep. Right? Yep. And anything anything that can indicate that hey, you were thinking about this, bro, you busted. Yeah. Especially now. If your it's it's, especially if you now. in front of your partner, you busted. You busted. Bro. You busted, bro. Especially now. So so again, are are people human beings? Absolutely. All right. Are do people make bad decisions? Bad bad decisions? Absolutely. Right, and you could do all these things and still make bad decisions. Mm -hmm. But in this game, right, there are no guarantees. But you want to give your best. You want to give yourself the best shot to win. Mm -hmm. You want to give yourself the best opportunities to be successful. And it does not guarantee success. It does not guarantee that you're gonna be committed. But bro, it's gonna help you. It's gonna help you give give you the best shot. All right. So if you uh, take take your ass off porn. 
right? You're changing your algorithm. You're surrounding yourself with people who are in committed relationships. You are limiting the amount of times that you're going out to the club in social places with your single friends who you know are going to have other single women around. Because what I've learned is we all have a threshold for discipline and fighting off temptation. Yep. All right? The best discipline is to avoid tempting yep. situations. Yep. It's the best discipline. Yep. So if you're constantly putting yourself in situations where you have to actually you actually you actually have to overexert yourself to be disciplined. You're in the wrong spot. That's you're in the wrong spot. Mm-hmm. Right? You don't want to have to overexert yourself. Discipline is something that you should do if you have to, but it's not something that you should mm-hmm. c- continuously do. Mm-hmm. Right? So that's one thing. Some some people say, "Yo, I'm just going to the club. I'm just have a little drink." I'm just I'm gonna just have a little drink. Okay, you you putting yourself in a situation where you're gonna have to talk to it. somebody. Let's go have a little drink. Okay, and then and then and then here's here's another thing, right? Let's say you're a handsome guy, you're a successful guy, and you've never had to turn down women ever in your life, so you don't even know how to say no to women. Mm-hmm. You don't friendly. even know how. So now you. Yep. So now what happens is you're too friendly. Too friendly. In your head, you're thinking like, oh, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. But you're too friendly. I'm not going there. I'm not going there. Oh, I'm not going yeah. there. But mm-hmm. that's how it happens. Yeah. yeah. So not being friendly, learning how to be, and then you know what's funny is you do have to learn how to be the a- a asshole to women. Stay with me. You got to learn how to be an asshole to women. Respectfully. Right. Yeah. You got to. You got to. When you, I'm talking about when you're in a relationship. Yeah. And the women aren't gonna like it, but your woman is. Yeah. And that's all that matters. Okay. When you have a man, when you're a woman has a man in a relationship, you want him to be an asshole to other women. And I'm not talking about like an asshole where, yo, I'm disrespectful, but an asshole in the sense that, yo, I don't have time for you because I'm I'm spoken for. Mm-hmm. I'm real short with mm-hmm. you. I'm real direct with you. Yeah. So you're not going to get the friendly banter That's from funny. me. Mm-hmm. That's funny. You're not going to get the friendly banter mm-hmm. from me only because, hey, yo, because I, I know where this can go. Yep. So you got to learn how to do that. And and in your head is like ain't no hard feelings, but I have to do this right now to keep this distance between you and I. Mm-hmm. And most most guys will never learn that because we've always been t- taught to be nice to women. Yep. And never hurt, never say anything to hurt women's feelings. But at some point, you do gotta have to have some balls mm-hmm. <laughs> around women and say, hey, "Nah, no, nah, nah, watch out, homie." And it's gonna be uncomfortable because, it, it, but they may not like it, but they gonna respect you for it. Too. It's gonna be uncomfortable. Yeah. And, and what happens is some women, you go out and some woman will strike up a conversation with you and you'll be like, hey, yo, like, I'm not even intel. I'm not, I'm not, that's not how I'm operating. And she'll be like, yo, I wasn't even getting at you like that. Okay. I, but you know. Yep. But you know. Yep. And that may happen, but it's okay. As long as you let the, as long as you put the, the line in the sand mm-hmm. and said, this is not what we're doing. You know, I hate to say it, but you got to be an asshole, man. I had a friend, a very prominent friend hit me up one time. He said, man, hey, I need some advice. He's like, yo, I'm kind of in a situation right now where, you know, I really want to commit to my woman. But, um, you know, I'm having thoughts. You know, I'm having thoughts to try to fight temptation. I said, yo, well, one, right, you got to stop being friendly. You're just way too friendly. You're just too friendly. Too approachable. Yo, you're too, 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 too approachable. Too- oh my God. Yo. Oh my goodness. Yo, like, hey, yo, first of all, yo, you're you too accessible. You definitely have to have like um an intimidating aura. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. All right. People have to look at you and say, like, I ain't approaching him. I ain't yep. approaching him. He don't look friendly. Mm-hmm. You have to really have that because again, when you are handsome, when you are successful, when you look like you got stuff going on, you don't really have to approach women. Yep. They will find themselves around you, and the conversation will happen. And, and that's something a man can turn on. A man can turn it on. You can turn that on. You can turn Stay it on. stoic. Yeah, you, you, you can turn it on. Cut all that, all that, all right. that, all that smiling out, bro. So it's important, yeah. right? You're looking too approachable. Yeah. Right now, there's a there's a fine line between okay, I'm networking, I'm trying to, mm-hmm. I'm trying to build relationships. Mm-hmm. This ain't that. That's that's not that. Yeah. Nah, this ain't that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yo, what else do we got? Are we are we missing anything? I mean, th- we are missing. There's a lot of things that we could cover. There's a, but yeah, there's a, there's a lot of things that we missing. Yeah, there's a lot of things we could cover. Um, I I will say this. Uh, I do think it's important, right, to keep exciting goals in your relationship and not get stagnant. I think it's important to not get stagnant because 
there's always something to work toward. Like you ever realize like why dating is so like exciting because man, we working toward engagement. Cool. Being a fiance is exciting because you know, we working towards being married and I feel like even in relationships when you're dating, sometimes if you guys don't have those goals aligned, a lot of there, there's space, there's time and temptation could kind of work its way in between those things. Mm -hmm. I know if you guys are focused, just how when you are focused in life, there's nothing that can knock you off your square. Mm -hmm. When your relationship is dialed in and focused, mm -hmm. it'd be hard to get knocked off of y'all square because you guys don't have time to do anything outside of the goals that y'all align for y'all relationship. Mm -hmm. So I think it's extremely important. Like outside of just like liking your partner and loving your partner, you guys should have goals together. Yeah. Goals together is gonna allow you guys to grow together and it's allowed to it's it's hard to impede growth when that's what the goal is. Mm -hmm. So it's so I, I would say just keep it, keep it, keep it spicy. Yeah. Keep it spicy. Keep it spicy. Keep it spicy. I, I would I would add to the goals is keep those those check-ins. Like those check-ins that we have here occasionally where we're asking each other, yo, how's everything going? Like I think those are important to do with your partner. Yo, I, how am I doing in the relationship? You know, because I feel like I, I feel like we're in a good spot, but I just need to know. Like, we're, I gotta ask a question. You just made me think. What's up? Have you ever asked your partner how am I doing in bed? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I have. Mm -hmm. and that's what I'm saying. And that's what I'm, and and I was gonna get to that too because once you once once we both answer those questions, mm -hmm. we could keep each other satisfied. Yeah, but a lot of times. Because it's uncomfortable sometimes to have, which is crazy because you lay with your partner, but sometimes yeah. it's uncomfortable to talk about it. For mm -hmm. sure. Sometimes it's uncomfortable to talk about it. But as long as you guys are constantly checking in and talking about each other's needs being met, you guys could keep yourself in a very positive and healthy space. Yeah. But the second that you, you go long periods of times without those check-ins is when bad things can occur within the relationship. So, you know, I would say constantly check in with your partner because those is important. And then also too, like our needs may change. You know what I mean? Yeah, the th yeah. things that I liked two years ago, you, mm -hmm. they may not do it for me no That's more. That's a fact. They, That's they, a fact. I, I don't know why, but I grew. I actually, I grew out of that. I don't really like that. I don't really like it like that no more. Yeah, yeah. That's can, true. can you do it like this now? You know what I mean? And I think those are very, very important conversations to have. And that's something that you don't grow up seeing. Obviously, your parents mm -hmm. talk about yeah. that type of stuff, right? And those are things that maybe we talk about here, but. They're not. Those are conversations that were happening enough with amongst our friends. Yeah, like, yeah. are you and you talk about it all the time? Yeah. Well, we talk about it like, hey man, y'all having sex, <laughs> you, you, or things of that nature. You know yeah. what I mean? And and I think constantly having those those check ins are very very good. Yeah. Right. And they start at home with your partner. Yeah, I like to just equate everything to, you know, the easiest analogies to make is like fitness and diet with everything. Mm -hmm. And I I kind of treat it like that, man. Initially. Because you never really experienced it long term or it's something you struggle with long term, it's going to feel like you can't do it long term initially. But just like working out, when you start, it's going to be a lot of, it's going to be struggles. And you're going to be thinking about like, yeah, I can't do this. And when you try to eat uh, healthy, it's going to be the same way. But over time, you will start to develop good habits that give you evidence that you can actually be monogamous. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when that happens, believe it. But until it happens, just focus on, don't, not so much, I mean, think about monogamy, right? Monogamy should be the goal, but focus on like the small actions that are going to yield the result of monogamy, right? So the things, like I said, like unfollowing the girls that you're attracted to, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. Like you should not be following the, a lot the of women Instagram. that you're attracted to. You should not be following a lot of Instagram baddies. Y'all crazy. Mm -mm. Um, so things like that, right? The little nuances, man, make sure you guys are taking care of like the small habits, like the porn pornography, the going out too much the alcohol even right drinking a lot of alcohol like lay off the alcohol a little bit because time, alcohol right? distorts your decision making ability and a lot of times you know people do crazy stuff on alcohol so like that's another thing so when we're talking about the practicalities man it's everything's on the table right don't think that you are above any of that stuff because all that stuff can impact you know your ability to to be monogamous right and the other thing is like don't be embarrassed to say that yo i want to be a monogamous Mm -hmm. Right. It's OK. Like people respect you. Like being monogamous is hard. And men respect other men that do hard stuff. Mm -hmm. We don't respect men that do easy, that take the easy. That's not how we operate. Whatever's harder, you may not get the attention, but you get the respect. respect. And if you can respect, you good. All right. But listen, 
if you are watching this right now, go ahead, snap a shot, take a screenshot, uh, post it on your story. Um, make sure you're following us on all social platforms. Make sure you are subscribed to us on all streaming platforms. Um, leave a comment. Let us know what you thought about the episode. Make sure you're following us. Myself at Duke, Omar, Omar Bowden, and Jalan at just.jalan. Okay. Much love, much gratitude. I'm Duke. I'm Omar. I'm Jalan. This is another episode of Nice and Neat, and that's hey, that you know, on that. I'll Peace. be the one to take the risk to go and get them bands. I'll be the one to never sit and go and make a plan. Knowing my mother getting old now, I got no time. Gotta keep a couple for the road, or else get left behind. Yeah. To the hundreds, pledge allegiance, I stand. I'm going pro for